Sí, no es. Number one anchor, Grand Don Burgundy. Analytics, Rick Hirsch. Geochemistry, Kendra Corningstone. And your man in the field, Brian Fantana. This is your 2 o'clock news, 431. What's up? Good afternoon, 431. I am Brian John Burgundy. This is Channel 4 News. We have just received groundbreaking news at the East African Rift Zone. I'm going to send you over to our field guy, Brian Fantana. I'm your man, Brian Fantana here, coming to you live from the East African Rift in Kenya where diverging plates are causing rifting and magmas and lavas and I don't know, I'm throwing it back to Brick. Brick, we're filming. Thanks Brian, hello folks. We're gonna talk about the East African Rift Formation. Um, basically our man in the field, Brian Fantana, was somewhere in this general area, the East African Rift System. Here you see we have three plates kind of uh, diverging away from each other. Uh, the Arabian Plate to the north, the Nubian Plate to the west, and the newcomer to the scene, the Somalian plate. So the Arabian plate and the Nubian have been diverging for the past 30 million years. The Somalian plate is trying to do, diverge away from the Nubian plate and basically leave Africa. Uh, but we also have these discontinuous uh, new developing plate boundaries west of the Kenya Dome, the western branch, and east, the eastern branch. So what causes this rifting? Uh, mantle plumes. Uh, these mantle plumes are beneath the continental crust and they cause the brittle continental crust to basically expand. When this happens, uh, we get uh, fracturing and normal faulting. So we have blocks of continental crust actually drop, and we see this uh, horse and robin structures throughout our rift valleys here. So when we have magnetism, events actually reach the surface. Uh, they follow the fractures, and so they're a thin, basically, sheet when they hit the surface and expand for a large area. Uh, it's basaltic in nature, so we term these flood basalts. With further divergence, we actually develop new oceanic crust, and ocean basins, as we can see here, and also in the Red Sea. Uh, going back to those discontinuous rifts, east and west of the Kenyan Dome, uh, we have the East Rift, which basically has the most uh, of the volcanic activity in the region, whereas the Western is home to some of the largest lakes in the world. Uh, they're basically created by the mantle plumes uh, for both the East and West, which is analogous to the Ethiopian Plateau here by the Afar Junction. Um, but geoscientists are trying to figure out, are they local mantle plumes that are occurring, or one giant super plume? To figure this out, we need to kind of look at the geochemistries of the magmas. And to do that, we'll go to our lead geochemist, Kendra Corningstone. Thank you, Brick. Now we're going to dive more into the geochemical side of the East African Rift system. So although each volcanic system has some distinct geochemical signatures, there are regional commonalities that suggest the East African Rift System is driven by a single, yet chemically heterogeneous plume, known as the South African Superplume, that must tap a heterogeneous source at deep mantle depths, perhaps even at the mantle core boundary. The Western Rift and East Rift show high degrees of crustal assimilation, more so to the south, which corresponds with considerably thick lithosphere and lower magma supply rates. This can be supported by higher lead isotope compositions to the south, Overall, the lead trends towards high mu. The western rift basalts are generally silica undersaturated with respect to the eastern rift. They are characterized as alkaline basalts. The eastern rift can be divided into north and south components. The north component are transitional tholeitic, while the south component are just tholeitic. The south component basalts have intermediate strontium nibidium values, which suggest crustal lithospheric assimilation prior to eruption but the high lead ratios are inconsistent with the simulation of crustal contamination seen in the north component. ...got rich basalts, which reflects the lowest degree of crustal assimilation. This is consistent with the regional crustal section that thins dramatically towards the junction between the Kenya Dome and the Ethiopian Dome, and this is known as the Turkana Depression. The basalts of both the western rift and the eastern rift show isotopic ratios that support mixing between a deep mantle reservoir. And that concludes our topic for today. I'm Kendra Corningstone. And I'm Brad Don Burgundy. And that's our topic on the East African Rift Zone. You stay classy, 431.
This is action. Huh? Oh, do you use African Rift Stone? <laughs> okay. yeah. How am I supposed to do dudes in Africa? I'm gonna send you to the This is Channel 4 News. You have just received breaking news from America. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get drunk before we get to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like a 